I, uh, well, in, in regard to the uh, functional assurance requirements, I mentioned the detailed contact tracing in, in regard to uh, the assessment of, of whether or not the functional requirements were working in the schools. And that brings up another point, and that is the balancing of security and competing areas of security. Uh, the contact tracing issue over the pandemic has been a very, very interesting one in regard to this balance because we have situations where uh, it is important to know as much as possible about a new infectious disease and which measures work, which don't, which are invasive for no particular benefit, uh, which do provide safety for the general public and so forth. And, of course, these are complicated matters, and so a number of people uh, do not uh, either have the information or understand the, the full information, and so we need an awful lot of data to, uh, number one, determine what the reality is, and number two, explain that to the general public as to why certain measures should be undertaken and others should not. So, uh, the balance, though, is between the need for public safety and the, the information uh, that you know is is vital to making these decisions and the uh, well danger i suppose of uh, information being gathered and the invasion of privacy the loss of privacy the loss of confidentiality in in terms of these uh, this information now all we really need is the information in aggregate. Ultimately, that is what is going to uh, allow us to make those decisions. But we have to collect the information individually, and we have to know the factors individually. Did this person wear a mask on a regular basis? Did this person get vaccinated? When did this person get vaccinated? How far apart did the booster shots come? Uh, so on and so forth. All of these factors relate solely to the individual, but in terms of making the decision, all we need, all we want, ultimately, eventually, is the the aggregate data so we have this this balance do we have can we have the information um that we we need in, in the aggregate without going uh too far into invasion of privacy of the individual and what the individual has or has not done um so we, you know, they, there needs to be a balance there uh, between the the you know definite need for public safety and the definite need uh, for privacy and uh, uh, for confidentiality and on the part of individuals' information. This, you know, we. We have to find a balance. We have to find a good balance. What is the appropriate level? Uh, what are the appropriate steps to take? Um, what kind of information uh, can we obtain? Now, uh, it's interesting. Um, ultimately, uh, the... Sorry, to, to begin with, a lot of people were thinking, okay, we we're going to have these these apps on our cell phones and these will provide uh, indications for people as to when you have been in contact with someone who has been exposed or has uh, got the virus and, and would have been shedding uh, while you were in the same vicinity. And therefore, you, you may be in danger, it may be at risk, uh, should go and get tested. Uh, 
These turned out not to be particularly useful, but it is instructive to look at the design of these apps. Um, the, the basic protocol for these apps was to have simply random numbers that my phone would have an app on it, it would be uh, broadcasting a random number uh, at, you know, which changed at, at certain periods of time. And uh, it kept track of that. And then, you know, if I got diagnosed with uh, COVID, I would tell the app that, yes, I was diagnosed with COVID. It would submit those random numbers to a central registry. And then everybody else who had the app on their phone, their phones would be checking for the random numbers that they had received from other phones in the vicinity. And if it matched up, they were near me uh, at a time when presumably I was in uh, uh, an infective state. Uh, the, the numbers would only be kept for as, as long as we figured that people were infectious. And uh, that, you know, it was only the random numbers. Now, the numbers were random. They didn't have any meaning. They didn't have any relation to identity. They would just, you know, if you got a matching number, the, the app would tell you, go and get tested. You've been in contact with someone who was infectious. You would go and get tested. And, you know, there, there's no, uh, no invasion of privacy there, no breakdown of confidentiality. Your information, your personal identity is never at risk in in that regard um, and that's you know so that is a good balance it, it protects uh, the the confidentiality the privacy of the individuals and everybody you know could be okay unfortunately as i say turns out that that doesn't work particularly well in terms of the uh you know actual being useful in identifying uh, people. But the theory, the theory was good, and the theory uh, did protect privacy. Uh, now, it, it turns out, though, that many people thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll tune this up. We'll make it better. We will assign times to the numbers so that the, uh, you know, you'd have to match the time as well as the uh, the random number, and therefore, um, the people who, uh, you know, got the warnings could, uh, it would have fewer false positives that they would be having to go and get tested, even though they had not been in, in touch with the person at the, the appropriate time, or, uh, that it would, uh, uh, hold the, uh, um, location information you know where where were you when you broadcast this particular number and and again matching not only the number but also the location and it turns out that uh you know if you do even one or the other you don't even have to have both if you uh matched times and if you or if you match locations, and particularly if you match both, uh, and, and associated that data with the random, supposedly random, unidentifiable numbers, that it would, in fact, uh, create a privacy breakdown. And uh, the confidentiality would be lost in that case. So, very interesting uh, design uh, considerations that we have to have when we are trying to balance the appropriate levels of security and the different types of security.